So I just wanted to, to give a final sort of recap around our coalition agreement and what we've, you've got in your packs, our coalition tracker. And I think before we talk about the deliverables that we've received on the coalition tracker, I think we need to step back and think for a moment about what we got in that coalition agreement. That is what leadership looks like, that is what political savvy looks like, and that is what dedication to core basic principles about getting our country back meant. So if you go through some of those key points, I think it's really important that we start to look at the basic principle of New Zealand First is that we stood up for hard-working Kiwi battlers that needed hope and surety that their efforts would be supported rather than a continual implementation of roadblocks to progress. So as I've said repeatedly, um, and as Winston Peters has said, we needed to get out of the shadow of darkness that we had been in and returned to our former greatness as a world leader economy. So this is what we've done. And the first thing we had to do under the coalition agreement and part of our commitments was get rid of some of those roadblocks. And that was repealing the Natural Built Environments Act. That was repealing the Spatial Planning Act. That was redirecting expenditure by stopping projects that were dragging us backwards, such as the Auckland Light Rail and Let's Get Wellington Moving and reduced wasteful, wasteful spending on cycleways. And we stopped the review of the ETS. <laughs> And we stopped the review of the ETS system so as to restore confidence and certainty in the carbon trading market. Then we had to get things moving, and that's what we did well. Um, first and most importantly, we re-entered the world as a viable, important and effective trading partner. We have one of the best foreign ministers in the world, if not the best. <laughs> Under the leadership of our Deputy Prime Minister, the world has woken up to New Zealand. They have welcomed us with open arms and they know we're out for business. We've committed to prioritising free trade and, and fair and free trade agreements. Uh, the UAE trade agreement was delivered in record time and we've re-established our presence and work is continuing to op optimise trade opportunities. But in order to trade effectively, we have to have something to trade. And that is where the inimitable Shane Jones steps in as the warrior for growth strategies. With establishment of the National Infrastructure Agency um, that will coordinate government funding, connect investors with New Zealand infrastructure and improve funding and delivery to get New Zealand growing and once again punching above our weight. Development has, we've developed the uh, draft of the mineral tra strategy for New Zealand for provision of opportunities to use our rich mineral resources. Work is well underway to reverse the oil and gas ban through the introduction of the Crown Minerals Amendment Act. Yeah. And we've achieved the extension of the marine consents to stop further impediment to the productivity and growth in our seafood sector. There is also a range of work under resource management which is reforming to, which will reform to alleviate the pressure on our critical primary sector. And we have the strongest advocates with Mark Patterson and Shane Jones and Jamie Arbuckle fighting for our horticulture, our farming, our seafood and our natural minerals uh, sector. And then most importantly, the fast track approvals legislation which is underway and the $1.2 billion of regional infrastructure fund. That's what vision looks like, that's what growth looks like, that's what taking back our country looks like. New Zealand First knows that if you want to be able to do more, you have to first create growth and invest, and investment is our key, and that's what we're doing. But we also want to know that our citizens are safe and happy to live in this country, and that is why we have invested so heavily in our coalition agreement to law and order. We've increasing the police numbers and secured the funding for 500 police, and that is allowing the police to have the autonomy to deliver resources where they're most needed. We're not there to run the police, we're there to resource the police and let the police make their decisions. And I think in a true spirit of what it really means to be a New Zealand First member, we have to acknowledge Stu Husband, who dedicated his son just this week to be a new police constable stationed in Palmy.
We have also introduced a suite of measures um, to fight youth crime and get some practical solutions back. And we are also protecting victims of crime through a range of strategies around sentencing and putting the victims ahead of the offenders and not being afraid to call out um, when things are off track and say what needs to be said. said and we are implementing, um, we have implemented gang membership as an aggravating factor in sentencing. Importantly, and I know I'm holding you up from lunch, but this is really good stuff. Um, we have investing in our young people. We said right from the start, and we prioritised in our coalition agreement, that we need our children to have a good start in life. And that's the first thing, is we have to get them to school. So we have committed to compulsory education. It is, we have put in a range of measures around preventing truancy, and we're get, driving forward to make sure that when they go to school, they're learning, and we have committed to emphasising reading, writing, and, and maths, and that is being delivered with compulsory time commitments to the basics of education when they go to school. We're also investing wisely in education. We've stopped the first year free, fees free and shifted it where it should have been right from the start to a final year free. and maintaining the Apprenticeship Boost Scheme. And while we're at it, we're making progress on refocusing our curriculum on academic and achievement, not ideology. ideology. Our kids... <laughs> our kids are not social experiments. The next um, part, which is passionate to me, and I was very grateful to be made the Minister for Seniors, is that we have protected the superannuation age at 65, and we're looking at practical solutions like housing options with the 60 square metre dwelling, um, subsidiary dwelling option being developed now. Um, we have the Health Select Committee, as Jenny has talked about, focusing on aged care, and we are working on a number of opportunities around the gold card uh, to ensure we optimise benefits. And most importantly, engaging with the aged care sector. And as my colleagues have all said, I get out and about the country. I, have, I think I um, have managed to get round most of the country, but I get round to visit the aged care sector, to talk to those that are providing those services, to talk to the workforce. And we have a significant aged care review underway with the Ministry of Health to deliver a better, sustainable and hopefully bipartisan agreement across the, um, the country. Um, finally, we want to ensure that we live well, and first and most importantly, we are New Zealanders with a health system that does not differentiate services, so the Māori Health Authority was abolished. And we are a party about practical solutions, and we have um, started the process to repeal the Therapeutic Products Act, and that repeal will report back to the, from the Select Committee on the 1st of November. And I'm currently working on um, the development of the replacement legislation that will ensure that we have good purpose-fit purpose um, medicines available in a cost-effective way and legislation that is proportionate to risk and natural health products to be dealt with in a manner that promotes both their use and allows the economic growth that that industry provides. <laughs> we committed to mental health with the funding of Gumboot Friday and I Am Hope Charity, and we will continue to deliver practical and realistic approaches to achieve Smoke Free 2025. We will not be dictated by ideology, we will be dictated by what works, what is practical, what our communities need, and what was effective. And that is why I'm prepared to continue to stand up to make sure we deliver positive solutions. So then we have, finally, we talk about our citizenship and nationhood and what it means to be a Kiwi in our great nation. Our nation's name has, no, has been protected, and without a referendum, it will not change. The language we use in public service and Crown entities is English, and that has been confirmed. And our freedoms continue to be a priority, and that is why we stopped the introduction of hate speech legislation.
And as Tanya has mentioned, we have um, the phase two of the Royal Commission of Inquiry and the COVID-19 response with the broad terms of reference and new commissioners so we can get an outcome that is relevant and effective. We are retaining we are retaining our sovereign identity by ensuring that UNDRIP is not recognised by the New Zealand Government as having any binding or legal effect on our nation. <laughs> and we are ensuring that a national interest test is applied to international conventions. I would highlight that this is just a taste of the work we've done and the tracker is continuing with a lot of work that is ongoing that will continue to move forward. But what I can say, hand on heart with my colleagues and looking at Winston in front of me there now, is that one year on, I can say with confidence, we have taken back our country.